guys, what's up? It's Blythe. Today I wanted to show you guys the tomato varieties that I'm going to be growing in my market garden for 2022. So I had a few already that I want to redo this year and then I also bought like a ton more. Uh, last year was actually my first year growing tomatoes. I'm not a huge fan of tomatoes, but after growing them and eating them, I might be converted now after growing them myself. They were super delicious. I ended up making um, a tomato paste from my Roma tomatoes that I grew last year and it, it's already gone because I used it so much it was so good and it took it took like forever to make but um, if you guys want to see a video about how to make tomato paste definitely let me know uh, below and I'll do that for you guys this summer but let's go ahead and get started and get into the varieties of tomatoes that I'm going to be growing this year so first, I wanted to go over the ones that I grew last year that I will be growing again this year. And like I said, I didn't grow a lot last year. I attempted to grow a few more later in the season, but they didn't ever, you know, reach maturity. And they ended up dying off before in the heat before I could get to using any of their tomatoes. Um, but last year I grew, my favorite that I grew last year was Roma tomatoes. And I last year i grew just a big red tomato from fair try that again so last year i grew a big red tomato from fairy Moore, which is i just got it probably at home depot or lowe's and they were good let me get it out so you guys can see it And they were good, I just ended up mostly using them uh, in my tomato paste that I had because uh, I ha probably had like a lot of pounds. I don't even know. I didn't even measure how many pounds of tomatoes it took for me, but I made like a little half pint jar of tomato paste. So basically all the tomatoes, I think I probably gave away like a couple of pounds of them last year, including my Roma tomatoes, the big red and the Roma tomatoes and used whatever I had left for the tomato paste. So I grew that and then the Roma tomatoes that I grew last year were the same from Fairy Moore, probably got them from Lowe's. They were my most productive. I had a ton of Roma tomatoes um, that I grew last year and I'm growing these again this year. Um, but other than that variety of Roma tomatoes, I also have the Midnight Roma Tomato by Row 7 Seed Company, and you can see on the package that there's a lot of dirt because I did attempt to grow these last year. And they grew, they were okay, I think I harvested one because I attempted to, I thought that, you know, oh, it's not going to be that hard to grow tomatoes and I'm not going to need to trellis them. They'll be fine. Like, they're going to be okay. They don't need that much attention. And I was very wrong about that. So this year I will be trellising my tomatoes and definitely uh, we redid the garden, which I'm going to take you guys on a tour of the garden soon. Um, and we got in some new compost, new dirt. It's all fresh, uh, super, super good soil which I'm really excited because last year, most of my plants struggled. Some of them didn't, um, most of them did. And it's just because I didn't have the resources to, you know, change the garden up last year. Um, and we did it this year. So I will be growing these again and hopefully we'll have a good harvest from them. They're like a super deep purple red. So it makes them, you know, that's why they're called uh, midnight. And I think they'll be really beautiful in the garden. And like I said, those are from Row 7 Seed Company, which I also bought a few more things from them, which I'll show you guys later, but it should be coming in the mail soon. Um, after that, I have some variegated tomatoes that I'm growing this year. And I don't know if you guys watched my other, my pepper haul video, but I am growing a ton of variegated uh peppers and tomatoes this year which i'm super super excited about and they're coming up in their i already started these they're coming up in their seed trays right now and all the leaves are variegated and it's super cute i'm like i'm checking on them every day because because i never know 
what's gonna be new. So for variegated tomatoes, I got these next three from Victory Seed. They don't have the um, picture on the seed packet, but I'll I'll show you guys after I um, tell you which varieties these are. I'll put a picture up on the screen so you guys can see. Uh, the first one is uh, Dwarf Walter's Fancy. So it's a dwarf tomato plant that's variegated. These say that they are a pale yellow tomato on them, so they're not red. I'll just kind of show you guys what the package looks like. And then next I have the Blues Bling from Victory Seeds and it is a fairly compact, interesting, very good at leaves. Um, the fruit is dark pink with darker shoulders and they are very large up to 28 ounce uh, tomatoes. And I'll show you guys that packet. After that we have Splash of Cream variegated tomato and it is indeterminate, uh, very unique variety as the leaves are variegated. The fruit are small, two to five ounces and red. It's very productive it says. And these are ones that I got this year, um, so I've never grown these before. And I actually started these three in my new greenhouse, which I'm gonna show you guys in my garden tour video. And just to kind of, cause I've never had a greenhouse outside before. So I kind of felt like I needed to test it out this year, which maybe that's silly, but I, I do have a thermometer out there and it has been, it's been staying like on cooler nights. It's been staying, it's not super well sealed in and I'll show you guys that too, but um, it's been staying like five to six degrees above whatever temperature is like outside. And I think that that's really okay because here in uh, zone 8B, I believe I'm in, might be zone 8A, I gotta look it up, 8A. Um, it really, it, unless um, the temperatures get down, you know, like to 25 degrees or less, everything out there is gonna be okay. And so I just wanted to test that. And if it does get below that, which at this point, most likely it won't, but sometimes Georgia weather is weird and we have like, you know, snow in the end of March. So we'll see kind of what happens um, with that. But if anything, I'm just gonna pull them inside for the night, like if it's getting uh, below, probably below like 28, 27 degrees, I'll pull them in. But the tomatoes that I started out there are already sprouting and I'm so excited, so. Do you need to be in the video? Do you want to be in the video? <gasps> Look. Hey. Say hi. She's very curious about what I'm doing over here. So, next after that for variegated, we have the Painted Lady Tomato from Wild Boar Farms. And I tried to grow these last year. I just direct um, seeded them last year and they never sprouted. I did it twice and they never came up. I'm not sure why, but this year I decided to start them indoors and they've already sprouted in their little seed trays. Again, probably gonna say this a hundred times. I'm very excited. So yeah. So after that, I'm just gonna start. That's all my variegated um, tomatoes that I'm growing this year and that is four different varieties of the variegated tomatoes that I'm growing. So I'm just gonna hop right into my other Wild Boar Farms um, varieties that I'm growing this year. Uh, the first one is gonna be the Costaludo Genovese, which is super fluted, very beautiful. I think that they are probably the most eye-catching tomato that I'm gonna be growing this year, other than the variegated ones because those are going to be super eye-catching. But I was just looking on Wild Boar Farms on their website and I'll link um, all of these seed companies below and it really just caught my eye so I decided to try it and I did not grow it last year so I am really excited about growing it this year. After that we have Brad's Atomic Grape from Wild Boar Farms. And 
and I grew these last year. They weren't super productive, but I did harvest some, and I think I ended up just putting them in the tomato paste as well, so. After that, we have the blue boar berries, which look like little blueberries. And they are a cherry tomato, I think. I'm not exactly sure. I tried to grow these last year. Didn't work out. Apparently, a lot of my tomatoes didn't work out last year. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's, you know, it's, it's always okay to try again next year. And just kind of like learn from the past and what you did wrong and try to figure it out. So I think too, another thing is that they were in too sunny of a spot. The ones that did really good, the Roma tomatoes and the big red tomatoes, they did better because they were in um, a partial, not partially shaded, but they had sun for probably three quarters of the day. They had a part sun, part shade, but more sun than shade. Uh, when the sun was setting in the south, they weren't exposed to that southern heat from the sun. So I think that, that really did them well. And so I'm planning strategically this year to plant them um, behind trellises so that are south facing so that when the south sun comes up, it will shade those a little bit uh, from the intense heat. So we'll see. I'll definitely keep you guys updated and we'll see how that goes. The next one from Wild Boar Farms is a wine jug tomato. And I've never grown these, so I'm really excited. They're kind of like weirdly shaped, like big uh, bottoms and then like skinnier necks. Um, and I thought that they were really cool looking, so I got those as well. After that, we have the Cherokee Rose from Wild Boar Farms. And I did grow the cherry rose last year and it produced a few, but it was kind of towards the end of the garden and they never ripened up to where I picked any of them. And then I ended up, my ducks had to live in the garden for a while. And once I put the ducks in there um, for most of the day, um, several weeks, they ran out of bugs to eat. <laughs> Not necessarily that they ran out of bugs to eat, but they, ate as many bugs as they could and they started eating uh, a lot of the foliage from my plants which they will do and that's why it's more ideal to just let them in for a few hours at a time to eat bugs and they prefer slugs and we have plenty of slugs here so it's really nice I'm really glad that I have them to just kind of I can just corral them in there you know for a couple hours a day or every other day or whatever once a week whatever I feel like doing and they'll go straight for the slugs and for the bugs and eat all those and if I notice that they're going to start eating the foliage or some of my um, vegetables or my crops then I can just take them back out so we had another part of the yard that we were going to fence in last year and it never happened so that's why they had to live in the garden for a while and so we actually finished that fence and we got them in there and it's a much bigger area for them to play in. They actually, they have so many bugs out there that they haven't been finishing their food that I, that I give them at night. So like there's still food in the morning in their bowl. So they are full of bugs, very happy. But anyway, they ended up, they ended up eating just basically everything that I had left in the garden. And I, I couldn't really do anything at that point because I didn't want to keep them locked up in their uh, coop all day. They just weren't able to run around free range um, in our yard anymore because of some circumstances, but we ended up putting them in the garden and that's, that's just what we had to do. And I, I preferred that they be in the garden and be able to, you know, spread their wings and eat some bugs and eat some plants more than I preferred to harvest the last fruit of the season. So that's what happened with those. After that, we have um, the Steakhouse Hybrid Tomato from Burpee. And I saw these in their catalog that they sent me and the tomatoes it says at up to three pounds meet the biggest tomato ever bred with true heirloom tomato flavor so it is a hybrid has heirloom flavor three pounds you know since i'm so good at tomatoes i thought that you know i could definitely do this i can definitely grow a three pound tomato it's gonna be fine so we'll see how that works out 
After that, I have the Black Strawberry Tomato from Baker Creek, and it is one of the, it was the one that was on the front of their catalog this year, and I was like, I'm not going to get it because everybody's going to get that, but... They sold me because it's beautiful. So, and then after that, we have a Candyland Red Current. They're super cute, like little tiny, super red um, tomatoes from Territorial Seed Company. So I'm really excited about trying these this year. I'm really excited about everything. After that, this is not a tomato, it's a tomatillo, but I am growing the pineapple ground cherry. I grew Aunt Molly's ground cherry last year, and it was so, it was so good. Like, they're really tart, but they have like this, just the flavor is super sweet, and I, I wanted to try them, you know, because everybody grows uh, ground cherries. It's, it's just something unique that you can grow and snack on in the garden. And I thought, you know, it's going to be fun. I can grow something to snack on if I like it. And I absolutely love it. So this year, I'm not growing Aunt Molly's ground cherry. I'm going to try the pineapple ground cherry because I've heard a lot about it. And I've heard that it is one of the best. So that is it for the tomatoes that I'm growing. I, it seemed like I had a lot more than that, but I think that that is going to be, let's see, how many varieties is that? One, two, five, six, nine. That's 15 tomato varieties, which may not seem a lot to a lot of you big gardeners on here, but I, like I said, I think I grew maybe four or five successfully, and by successfully, I mean I got a tomato off of them. <laughs> Um, so I kind of reorganized, like I said, I reorganized the garden this year and I'm going to grow on trellises and I didn't prune last year. I didn't, you know, take the suckers off like everybody says you're supposed to do because I was like, oh, I don't have to do that. So I'm going to do it this year and hopefully we'll have a great success in tomato gardening. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.